What's good, guys? This is episode 14 of the Through It All podcast, and I'm here with Matt Crystal Bowl. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Thanks, man. Thanks for hopping on. I think the first time we met, it was Pal. So Pal was like, uh, we it was at our high school. It was called Link Crew, but it's like mm-hmm. just assisting like the freshmen with orientation and stuff like yeah. that. So you were my leader, and it was... I was. I was. It was last year, right? Yeah. Over, last year, yeah. Yeah. And it was, what was, it was Team Batman. Team Batman. But then I got switched out of your group somehow. We still don't know how I, that I happened. I don't know how that happened, but still kept in touch, which is good. For sure. Yeah. And now we are here today. Absolutely. You ever been on a pod before? I've never been on a podcast. Okay. Never. All right. So first time, man, I'm excited. Um, you texted me, you said you graduated from Servite mm-hmm. in, what was it, 2019? 2019. 2019. And you are pursuing a degree in Kines. Kines. Yep. Dope, man. So uh, emphasis in allied health and minor in theater. Interesting. Now, how'd you pick Kines? So, what I, the story of how I picked Kines is kind of like, uh, it's weird. It's like different than most people. Um, I've done, I did MMA when I was younger. I started out doing Taekwondo uh, when I was like eight. I finished that and got to a second degree black belt wow. when I was 12. Then switched to UFC and MMA when I was 14. Yeah. So then I did that for like six years. And like, yeah. That's dope. Yeah. And then the reason why I chose Kinesis is because like seeing all like people break bones and like tear ligaments, it's like crazy to see how like people can recover from that. You know what I'm saying? Or like, or like people getting knocked out, you can like help them with recovery. Mm -hmm. So that was a big part of it, being able to be part of that process. I love it. Yeah. Now, what was the reasoning behind the switch from MMA to UFC? Uh, well, UFC is like, it's called Ultimate Fighting Championship. Mm-hmm. That's like the number one, like, company that hosts fights. Oh. Where MMA is like the style of fighting. Okay. MMA is mixed martial arts, so it's like a mix of all different types of styles. Ah. And then... Like a fighter trains to be an MMA fighter, and then they go to the UFC. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I had a coach who, uh, Curtis Millender. Mm-hmm. Shout out, Curtis. What's up? <laughs> if you ever watch this, I don't know if you ever will, but he was one of my coaches. That's dope. And yeah. you said you said he was in the actual UFC. Yeah. So how was it being mentored by someone who's made it? It was, it was really cool. It was like, it was so nostalgic to be able to go to his fights when I was younger. I was like so young. I was maybe like 10, 11 when I would go and just, watch his fights and like be like i was so proud of him then and then i hadn't talked to him in a couple years then like i see that he made it and he is out there like his first uh he won his first couple fights with a move of the night i think it was a i want to say it was either a back kick or something like that yeah that's curtis right there that's dope and then his payment was a dodge charger all decked out yeah wow yeah that's so sick yeah i think it was a red eye or something like that Dodge, that's a sweet car. Yeah. That's a sweet car. My roommate has that. Um, But what would you say is like the biggest teaching or I guess biggest lesson you've learned from the martial arts? Mm, I think the biggest lesson would be like, it was a lot about like culturing myself and like muscle memory Mm -hmm. was a big part of it. Like getting used to like getting hit and stuff like that and like different movements that you don't normally do in everyday life. So I think like counting on myself to be able to learn stuff really quickly because I think I learn stuff. I can pick stuff up pretty fast, like no matter what it is. That's like a a blessing that I have from being able to do all that stuff. Um, I think self-accountability, like Mm. being able to bet on myself to like succeed at something. I think that was a big thing. Like... A lot of self love from that. Mm. That's sweet, man. Because I've so like obviously I like I play basketball. Mm-hmm. So I've I never did any of the martial arts growing up or or none of that. But like over this past year or so, especially like in the spring of last year, um, I started like getting more like learning about it, reading books about it, and developing like a more martial artist mindset mm-hmm. versus 
necessarily like a being a basketball player. I feel like I'm more turning into like more of a martial artist on the basketball court. Yeah. And it's not just like a technique thing, like a like refining my shooting ability. It's the way I train my mind. You yeah. know what I mean? So like what I've picked up and I've never went to a class and any of that, but it's just like, man, if you can train the mind that's applicable to any aspect of mm -hmm. life. It's a lot of similarities. Like whenever, like no matter what you do, whether you are a singer, no matter if you are a sports person, play any sport, like there's a self accountability that you get from it. Mm. Like, cause you are the person that is like playing, whatever it is, like you're with you for the rest of your life. So might as well <laughs> for sure. like love yourself. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing. Like, that's the thing I love about martial art. Like I, especially like the culture, like samurai culture, I did a lot of reading on that, and that's actually my screensaver for both my desktop computer and my phone. Really? Yeah, because it's just like, there's just an image of a samurai. Like, I love what they're about, and then just seeing it, it's like, okay. Like, and my, my, the motto for the podcast is, this is it. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the moment, and it's derived from, like, the martial artist stuff. So That's sick. It's dope, man, but um, kind of rambled off on that, but <laughs> no worries, that's no my worries. spin on it. So, do you... You're living on campus this year, you said? No, I lived on campus first semester of sophomore year. Oh. Which was last year, yeah. Okay. And then I moved home second semester. Right. Yeah. Did you, you mentioned in like your text, you didn't necessarily want to move on campus your sophomore year? I, I wanted to move on campus because I needed to do it for me, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. Moving off campus kind of stuff. Moving off. off yeah. Okay, so that... So describe, describe that whole situation because I know you said being away from your family was something that was, was it, was it hard for you? Yeah. 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 So dive into that. I was a commuter my freshman year and then I had like a super tight knit friend group and, um, I experienced a lot of growth then. And then I think, um, I needed to be apart from my parents for a certain amount of time because, um, I needed to experience my individuality more. Um, so I decided my sophomore year, that I was just going to say, screw it, apply to be on campus for housing. Um, yeah, and I did it. Didn't go very well with my family for quite a little bit. Mm. Had to grow from that. Had to learn about it. And then, yeah, moved on campus. Loved it. I had to move back for financial reasons. Okay. So, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So. And you said it, it didn't go so well, like, in terms of your family mm. looking on it. What was that? What was the reasoning behind I that. think it's like a, like a cultural thing. Cause it seems like, so family is a big part of like Filipino culture. And like, I think they felt a certain of a uh, little bit of like abandonment or something like that. Cause usually when like parents get older, they want to like be with their kids, right. For their whole life. So like usually like grandparents, parents would all move in with the kid and, um, I guess maybe they felt like I didn't love them as much, which is not true at all. Like, I'm, I love my parents to death. They've done so much for me. But I think they, they took that uh, necessary, that need for individuality as like a, like, I don't love them type of thing, which mm. is not true at all. Mm. Yeah. Wow. But I think it needed to happen at some point in time, which was my mindset. So I was like, I'd rather, like, hurt them now and, like, get that individuality and then being able to show them that I love them rather than later on when I'm, like, older and, like, I need to be, like, by myself type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you expect that reaction from them when you were deciding to move and stay on campus? I did. I did, but I was willing to bite the bullet because ah. I, I think I needed to do it. Mm. Yeah. I like that. But I think, uh, well, everything now is a lot better. My parents know that I love them. Yeah. Nice, man. Nice. Seems good now. That must have been, like, Ain't, like you must have been running wild in your mind like all those thoughts of oh, just yeah. anxious like what is my is my family still gonna like accept me yeah you know what i mean yeah so there's I'm, a point like in time where we like we didn't talk mm, wow for a certain amount of weeks wow yeah it's tough and i was on campus mm. so yeah so damn man i mean respect for you for just uh just taking that leap though man that's cool um now so now you're working on a musical that opens on November 12th. Yep. Called opens Into on November Woods. 12th, 13th, 14th. Wow. And then the next weekend. Give me give me give me the rundown. It's called Into the Woods, yep. but what is it? 
about? What is it based off of? Into the Woods is like, I put it as like a um, intermixing of all these different like Grimm's fairy tales. So you have Cinderella and like the the slipper. You have Rapunzel and like the tower. You have Jack and the Giant Beanstalk. Um, Sleeping Beauty comes into play. Snow White comes into play. Um, yeah, and it's like a whole wild goose chase of different things. But the whole musical entitles around like pursuing something or chasing after something and that all one like these two characters that are different and like original to original to into the woods are the baker and the baker's wife and they want to have a kid and basically they need all these different things from these different fairy tales like they need like a slipper like i don't want to spoil anything (laughs) they, they need to get something from these other people in order to get their goal yeah so it's a hard musical hard music yeah. Dang, bro. That's, that's, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Thank you. <laughs> Watch my boy turn it up. And you are the, you are Rapunzel's prince. Yes. Is that correct? Rapunzel's prince. So what's your role in the play? Uh, Like my goal is to get with Rapunzel. Basically <laughs> like right. climb the tower, uh-huh. be with her for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. That thing. Yeah. And you said you have to sing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, singing, I don't, there's, like, very few lines in the show. A lot of it is, like, melodic singing, which is a lot of weird, it's it's pretty hard. So, what is, what does melodic singing mean? So, like, let's say you were going to say, like, a sentence normally, but then instead of that, you add, um, like, a certain uh, melody to the sentence to make it a little bit more interesting. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So, like, instead of saying, like, to get, to save, to wed, you go, to get, to save, to wed. That type of Ooh. thing. Yeah, where it's like you're jumping around, which is weird. And, like, the guy who made the music for it, Steven Sondheim, he's known for doing a lot of weird leaps where, you're like, you're going singing high notes and then going down low notes all within, like, a short amount of time. Right. Yeah, so I think the music and learn, getting that down has been the hardest part about it. Because cause you played that song over there, like, right before we just we hopped on the pod, and that was was crazy. Like, the way it fluctuated in between, like, what would it be called? Low and high notes? Yeah. That yeah, was... like, different registers. So like, how do you even how do you even get your voice to that point? I don't... I, it's just a lot of practice, I guess. I'm still learning. Not not a master of it at all in any way, but... Yeah. Is it is it natural? Like, did you always n- know you had a good singing voice? Or did it just, like, you just stumble upon it? I knew that singing was going to be a part of my life for a while. So, I grew up... Um, uh, with like music around the house all the time. My dad was a singer and he was younger. That's where I get my musical side from. And like my dad's side of the family, I uh, listened to a lot of old school R and B in the household, like boys to men, one of my favorite groups ever. Um, yeah. And I just picked that up from him. My favorite genre is R and B. So nice. Do you have any dreams for the future in terms of, um, Music, like after college? Um, maybe not music, but rather like acting would be, is like the dream, I would say. Nice. And then uh, my day job, I hate having to say a day job, but my day job would be like maybe physical therapy. Physical but I know that I would need to get physical therapy down first before I pursue anything in acting. And what do you, what do you like about physical therapy? Well, I, I kind of touched on a little bit earlier right. with like being able to, help people recover after mm-hmm. injuries, mm-hmm. that type of thing. Uh, it's interesting to me mm. to be able to see that. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Um, so I guess we're rolling into the through it all three then. Yeah. Okay. First one. Okay. Favorite order from Chick-fil-A. Mm, you got to go with nuggies. The nugs. The nuggets? Yeah. Nugs. Okay. What drink? Lemonade. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fries? Yeah, absolutely. Sauce. Yeah. Chick-fil-A sauce. And I don't know how people hit on Chick-fil-A sauce. Chick-fil-A I know some sauce? people out there who don't like Chick-fil-A sauce. You're lying. You're lying to yourself. I think ranch is, like, that's a tough, like, combo. Yeah, I think, like, ranch is my, my favorite sauce outside of Chick-fil-A sauce. Like, if I'm not a Chick-fil-A, I make a ranch. Okay. How many? <laughs> I think it depends on what you're getting. How, what's your nugget mean? How many nuggets? Twelve. 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 Big dog. Yeah. All Twelve, right. maybe four sauces. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Um, 
Next question. Yep. You get to sit down with three people of your choice, past or, or now. Any three people, who are you Dang. picking? To just kind of pick your brains and have a nice Any combo. Any three people to sit down with. Oh, man. That's a tough one. I think. One would be... Hmm. Leo DiCaprio. Yes. <laughs> yes. One of them, Leo DiCaprio. Lovely. Second would be Tori Kelly. Hmm. Do you know who that is? I don't. At all? I was, She's uh, an R&B singer. Uh-huh. Yeah, that she makes, makes like crazy music. Nice. Yeah, one of my favorite artists. Third would be... Mm, we got music, we got acting, we got... I'd have to say, like, probably Conor McGregor. Okay. <laughs> okay. That dude is a winner. Oh, absolutely. Just his mindset is insane. What do you What do you like about it? Uh, he kind of has, like, a F everybody type of mindset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's dope. Um. All right. Then last one. What advice would you give to your younger self? Hmm. Advice to give to my younger self. Probably, um, I think buy into your experiences more. Mm. Like the stuff that I'm going through at the time, probably buy in more and put in more into it. Because I find myself now um, wanting to have bought into playing volleyball more and like respected lifting at six in the morning. Mm. Yeah, a little bit more. I love it. I love it. Now... I'm going to circle back to kind of the Conor McGregor mindset because yeah. I think that's something that's, like, incredible. Like, that's obviously the reason why he got to where he's at. Mm -hmm. But did you see the fight when dude broke his leg? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's that's got to be one of my <laughs> worst fears ever. Yes. That's the worst. Like, your shin just breaking? Didn't he? Wasn't he, like, still fighting, oh though? Gosh. Like, after he got, like, hit, they saw it in the video because the dude pointed at his leg, right? Yeah, I think, like, the adrenaline rush. Like... Had kept him fighting for a little bit. As as a Kinesi Kines major, what's your perspective on Conor McGregor and his broken leg? How would you assess that situation? Jeez. Just seeing it through the screen. Oh my gosh! I think I'd be like, "All right, all right, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna need some serious some serious uh, recovery work going on here." I don't know. Too, I haven't uh, gone into much of it in my classes as to like the. Um, process of like how we go about healing somebody like right, that, like right. that type of thing, or like. Right. But I think you would definitely have to cast it up <laughs> <laughs> easily. Cast it up. Yeah, I, I don't like my job wouldn't be immediate person on on the field. I mean, on the octagon. Okay. Right away. Gotcha. Actually, it depends which which route I go. Could be. Could be. Could be. It could be. That's dope. All right, um, that's episode 14 of the Through It All podcast. One four. One four, Matt, Crystal Ball. Yep, thank you very much for having thank me. Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. Love it. Great episode. Sorry, my hands are clammy. That's all good, mine too. <laughs>